identifies with his children that move from one level of change to another. Metamorphosis actually talk about change, transformation from one form to another. And the, the beautiful thing about metamorphosis is that if we look at a butterfly, we look at it from the egg stage, it's totally different from when it forms the, the larva and when it forms the pupa and when it turns into a butterfly. And I believe that's one of the things that made it so unique. When, uh, when you're thinking about metamorphosis, you're thinking about uh, uh, an organism like the, like the butterfly. Because the, the, the form is continually changing and it's not like the previous one. And, and the, the first scripture we read today said being progressively being transformed into his image. This is because our faces are unveiled. We're not covered with the fact that this is who I am. I need, but instead our eyes are open to, I need to be more. I want to be more. God has created me to be more. I am going to work hard to be more. And because we do this and we continually, we continually, continually look at the face of Jesus, look at the word of God, we are changed from one level of glory to another. The form of glory that we had before is totally different from the form we get to receive after we um as we as long as we continually look into the glory of god the face of god hallelujah so i'm just going to quickly break that word metamorphosis into two and we're going to look at the first part meta what does it mean meta means a creative work referring to itself um, something that has to do with uh, a, a thing being um, conscious of the fact that there is a mechanism that is changing how it is moving, how it is working, how it is, uh, how it is functioning from one point to another. That is what Meta talks about. Meta talks about another different form. But not exactly you've got into the form. It has a prospect of that new form. That's what Meta talks about. Uh, like the Metaverse talks about the prospect of another universe. In the virtual world so we're looking at another different form the potential that it has and also it means a change of position or condition when something it's defined as meta which is a prefix it talks about something having the potential to change its position or its form um, meta also means denoting something of higher or second order kind it means uh, by itself, presently, it has everything it takes to have a higher value. It has everything that it takes to have a higher form than it's, take, it's taking now. Now, take note, anything that has to do with meta has to do with better. It means it's moving from a lower grade to a higher grade. That is the potential it possesses. It's not um, actually possessing anything like modification or substitution no it is totally changing it's changing entirely but meta as a prefix talks about the potential for it to have that higher form so another definition from the miriam webster dictionary says meta is an explicit awareness of oneself this is a psychological term uh, definition it says an explicit awareness of oneself you are aware of the state that you are in that's one. And you know that there is a very high possibility of you turning into something else. And you are aware of the potentiality of this awareness. Like, you, you are very sure that if you take one, two, three steps, you will become an entirely different person. That is what this, this definition is talking about. Then the other part of metamorphosis talks about morphosis. Amen. I know, I know we're learning this morning. And uh, uh, Morphosis talk about a mode of development. Now, this is no longer in its potential form. Like science would call it, it's already in its kinetic form. It means something has already started happening. So if we look at metamorphosis as a full word, it is a change of physical form, structure, or substance, especially by spiritual means. That's what the dictionary termed it as. Um, it means that any change we're experiencing from one form to another is not necessarily because it's just physical, but it stems from something we cannot see. And we're going to be looking at that um, briefly. 
Um, so metamorphosis also talks about the striking alteration in character or circumstances, um, like the, uh, the the butterfly. It changed from the egg to the larva stage to the pupa stage. Each of these stages, they are in different conditions, different environments, and have totally different forms. So when when they move from this stage to that stage, it is called metamorphosis, and that's what we're looking at today. So in 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 the context of what we're discussing today, what where does this metamorphosis happen? We're going to be looking at where it happens, and primarily. Uh, metamorphosis happens in our minds. Um, you, you, you can look at yourself from when you were in primary school to your secondary school. And if you're in university right now, you say, okay, I actually have changed. Yeah. If you have actually experienced a change, you, you didn't really change just maybe in your height or how you look. But most of the change you're talking about when it comes to metamorphosis is the change that has to do with how you think, how you see things. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. Uh, metamorphosis in terms of how we think, how we see things, our perspective to life. And every one of us have the potential to become more. So metamorphosis is very important. It's an important process for us to go through to achieve that. Um, we have been in a particular form from January to now. There is a better form. Yeah, there is a higher form than we have achieved in the past few months. And that is what this, this program, this session is going to be addressing. Um, who undergoes uh, metamorphosis? Let's, let's know the people that undergoes metamorphosis. Number one, they are visionaries. Visionaries is someone that has a picture of who he wants to become, where he wants to be in the next few years, in the next few months. So I challenge your thinking today. Are you a visionary? If you're a visionary and you know that you're not there yet, hmm, you're one of the people that are going to have, that, that will have to on, um, undergo the process of metamorphosis. So, who are the people that um, undergo metamorphosis? Number one, are visionaries. Number two, those who are not satisfied with the status quo. They want to change levels. They want something new. They want something better. These are the people that go through metamorphosis. Who also are those people that go through metamorphosis? Those who must get their goals achieved. No matter what they go through, no matter the challenges they are going through, they want to make sure <laughs> that they achieve that dream that they have in their heart. They achieve that goal that they've already set out for. So these guys are optimists. They are optimistic people. They are dogged. They keep pushing. These are the people that experience metamorphosis. Everyone that is dogged about their dream, one of the things they will tell you about, I was not who I was some few months ago. I had to learn some things new. I have to become another person, a, a totally different person from who I used to be to achieve this. So if we want to achieve the goals and the dreams that is in our heart, we have to become another person. Hallelujah. You see that the, the glory of Jesus was shown to John, um, Peter, James, and John. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ transfigured before them. And they saw another figure. Now, that another figure was the real glory of God. But Jesus Christ had to come in the form of man. But he showed them another form. That was because Jesus has a vision. The, the, the uh, Hebrew showed us, he said, because of the vision Jesus had in his heart, he was able to go through the challenges he was going through on the cross. And, and that is an ex example of someone that was dogged about his dream. That was a visionary. Jesus was a visionary. And for him to achieve that, he had to become another person. He became a servant. He became someone that could bear insults. He took our sins upon himself. He became a sinner for us and took our sins for us. And, and, and he was nailed to the cross to become that person that will stand for us and no devil can speak against us. So he had a vision. Because of the glory that was set before him, he endured the cross. So um, Jesus undergoed undergo metamorphosis to make sure that we are who we are today. And for you to become that big person that exceptional person that you dream to be, you have to undergo metamorphosis. The lastly, um, those who are to undergo metamorphosis are those who desire something new, something better, 
and something greater. If you do not desire something new, something better, and something greater, uh, there is no need for you to go through metamorphosis. It will be a challenge to you. In fact, you may run from the whole process. Everyone that have become bet better versions of themselves happen to go through metamorphosis. So the question will now be, okay, my dream is in my mind. I have who I want to become. Why go through this change? Why go through this rigorous exercise, this rigorous process? Number one, if you don't go through it, you can't become all that you were created to be. God has called us gods. I mean, not man calling us gods, not a book calling us gods, not a discovery calling us gods. God himself called us gods. And Genesis chapter 1 told us that we were created in the image and the likeness of God. If God is unlimited, we have so much we could offer to the world. I mean, look at the world around you right now. You're holding your phone. There's no wire connected to it and you can see me. You can hear me. Someone did that. <laughs> that is amazing. So um, one of the reasons why we have to metamorphose is to discover more that we are. Um, we get to discover more abilities within us. We get to discover more about who we are and what we can do. Number two, to achieve more. We can be more. You can be more. If you're watching me right now, I want you to lay your hands on yourself. Look at where you are right now and tell yourself, I can be more than this. Even if you don't believe in yourself, you don't know where you are right now, you're, conf you're confused about where you are, still lay your hands on yourself and say, I can't be more than this. And that is why we have to undergo metamorphosis. If you're going to actually see that more, you have to change who you are right now. If you do the same thing you've been doing before, you will never experience a metamorphosis. But for you to become that new person, that person of your vision, that person that you've written down to be, you have to undergo metamorphosis. Um, we're still looking at uh, why go through metamorphosis. Um, we have here to make more impact. <laughs> Someone that has, no, has not really experienced any change has nothing to tell you, has nothing to impact the world with. But someone that has consistently moved from who they are to better versions of themselves, everyone, everybody wants to identify with them. Everybody wants to identify with their products. Everyone wants to identify with who they have become. We want to know your story. We want to know how you became who you are today. We want to, we want to know how you changed from being a beggar to being someone that is giving out, being someone that had no product to be someone that is now an innovative, a creative person that have invented something that is adding value to the lives of people today. So everybody that undergoes metamorphosis happens to be someone of greater impact. And my friend, I know that is who you want to become. And this is the reason why you have to undergo metamorphosis and also to create a legacy for the next generation. We are enjoying what our parents did before now. Well, some of us are suffering it. Some of us are enjoying it. That's because it's either they metamorphosed or they remain in the stage they were in. So if you're enjoying it, they changed. You're not enjoying it, they never changed. Now ask yourself, the next generation, my children, what are they going to meet? Are they going to meet something that will bring them joy, more fulfillment, make life easier for them? Or they are still going to go through the same struggle I'm going through right now? If you can answer that question, you will know why you have to metamorphose. Not necessarily because of you. My pastor will always say something that no man is a man by himself. Every man is a people. Everything you do or don't do, you are actually impacting people either positively or negatively. So why not metamorphose? change into that person you have dreamed god has laid in your heart to become and see how much the world will celebrate you see how much the children that are going to be coming after us are going to be glad that you came to this earth and a time like this hallelujah so and also why we need to metamorphose is to be of better value because you will now see an opportunity to make other lives better and to make more profit so how do we metamorphose? I know some of us are waiting to hear that. Now I've seen the reason why I need to metamorphose and metamorphosis is my change of form to become that person that uh, God has created me to be. Yeah, so how do I achieve this? Number one, have a vision. Know who you want to become. Know what you want to achieve in life. Please, my friend. Um, it's okay right now if you don't have a vision. That's why you're hearing this. So just... 
write down this is who i would like to be in the next five years it's as simple as that uh, a vision is a picture of who you want to become a vision is a picture of what you want to achieve what you want to create you want to create a, a machine that is able to help market women move from one level uh, from one location to another without not necessarily paying so much for it and without them causing causing them to fall sick enter the rain and all that you may be thinking about something like that how do i create the solution so um if if you have a vision like that in your heart you are already a visionary and to achieve that you need to metamorphose you need to change so um how do i metamorphose number one have a vision number two spend time with the word and the holy spirit you see that scripture we read earlier says the more we look at the face of the spirit we are changed <laughs> from one level of glory to another god created us and the only person that really knows us is god and you can't find yourself outside god's word yes you can read a lot of books listen to a lot of speakers even listening to me right now but trust me it is not compared to what the word of God and the Holy Spirit can do in your life. I mean, it helps you to know who you really are and what you stand for. You may say, okay, well, I've discovered my talent, my passion and stuff. It may not necessarily be all that will bring fulfillment to you, but spending time with God and his word helps you to find you, not just your talent, but also what will bring you fulfillment. That is what you call calling. So every one of us in this world were called to do one thing or the other. I'm doing what I'm doing right now. Um, I have a passion for music. I have a passion for singing. But I think I'm also called, and I know I'm also called to do what I'm doing right now. So, and this was found by spending time with God. And it's growing every single day, little by little, little by little. Spending more time with God, the Bible said that we're changed from one form of glory to another. Hallelujah. And um, how do we metamorphose? Make better decisions today. How do you do that? Prioritize. What are the things most important to me? Is it my enjoyment or am I going through a process? You know, if you choose to enjoy your life and just live for anything, rather than go through the due process that will make you a better person, you're making the wrong decision. Why not make a better decision today? We're living in a world full of pressure, full of rush. There's so much rush in the atmosphere. You want to rush to be this. You want to rush to be that. There are shortcuts everywhere. Nobody wants to go through process. But actually, every metamorphosis is a process. And tr truly speaking, it's not a sweet process. But it's, it's a process that will always make you better. So um, make be making better decisions, I'm going to be studying more. I'm going to look inward more. I'm going to choose my friends wisely. I'm going to choose to be a better person. Being a better person is a choice. It's not something that happens automatically. So um, how do I metamorphose? One of it is making better decisions. Number three, challenge your present status or achievement. You may be celebrated right now, maybe as a first born, a last born, a first class, second class, third class, uh, uh, the best secretary, the best worker, the best whatever it is. You can be more. If you have achieved that, it's already the past success. Two months ago, Pastor made us to understand something, that one of the hindrances to our next level is actually our present achievements. So if you settle down in your present achievement, you can never move away from that achievement. You can never metamorphose. But when you see that, okay, I've achieved this, I've finished that, I've finished that um, assignment, I've finished that ability, there is more potential. Potential means in its energy, in its ability to do more inside of you. So, um, by the time you challenge your present status and achievement, you will discover that you have the ability to metamorphose. You have the ability to change. That's why some people, they read science in first degree, second degree, they, they go to art. They've metamorphosed because they want to achieve more. Yeah. So, um, how do I metamorphose? Number four, study and practice. You have to study all the time. Study about who you want to become and begin to practice those steps to become who you want to become. Practice, they say, makes perfect. But practice based on the study and the knowledge and the wisdom you're getting as per who you want to become. Number five is have the right association. Most of the greatest influences in the world are people that actually go to where they are by having the right friends around them. Some of them were lost. And um, having the right people around them, maybe as their father's friends or their mother's friends, happened to influence their thinking and made them to change their form. 
both in the positive and negative side. But today we're focusing more on the positive side and the godly side um, to, be, to be specific. So if you want to metamorphose into that person that God has ordained you to be, ask yourself, the first five friends that are around me, the first five, five, five people I admire right now, are they an example of who I want to become? Are they working towards becoming something themselves? So if they are not, please, you are in the wrong association and you have to change it. So another thing is get a mentor. Someone that can tell you, you're getting it wrong. Do it this way. Okay, you're getting it right, but you can be better. So there is no true metamorphosis, uh, metamorphosis that stands the test of time without mentorship. I'll say that again. There is no true metamorphosis that stands the test of time without mentorship. If you want to stand the test of time, having a legacy that can change the world, you must have a mentor. Um, number seven is be patient. The process may take a lot of time, but patience is always key. Uh, some patients might, might actually look like they are gaining, gaining more than, than you or are going faster than you. You see, uh, there are different plants in the world, different seeds in the world, and each of them have their timing. Your timing is different, my friend. As long as you're sure you're walking, <laughs> as long as you're sure you have the right friends around you, sure, you're studying and you're putting your best to work, uh, be patient. You're putting your best, be sure you're putting your best, be patient. You have a mentor, be sure you have a mentor. Be sure you have a vision. You're doing everything possible. You're spending time with God, be patient. The Bible says that when God turned the captivity of his people, now, the, the captivity there, it's not all negative. But when God changed the hard process, the process that looked like it will never end, it was like a dream. All of a sudden, there was a call. All of a sudden, there was a breakthrough. All of a sudden, everything changed around and it became who they dreamed to be. So I want to encourage you today to go through the process of metamorphosis and you will not regret it. My friend, you're created for more. And this program has been, have been ordained and designed to help you know that you can be more. But in order to achieve that, you have to become another person. Why don't you metamorphose today and have a better life, a legacy that your children will be proud of? Thank you so much for your time. I hope to see you next month. Have a blessed week. Thank you.